Now, how does movement come about in the moved thing? Here we have to look at two sides of movement. First, the subject of change. Note that the subject does not, strictly speaking, move itself from potency to act. For example, although we can say that the wall is a subject of change, and that it can become blue through a change, we do not say that the wall changes or moves itself to be blue. Instead, we say that the wall is changed or is moved to be actually blue. Next, we have the agent, who is the mover that changes or moves the subject from potency to act. Using a more specific Latin terminology, we say that the subject of change, or the thing that is moved, is the motum, and the agent, or the mover, is the movens. Thus, we can see, on the one hand, that something, a subject of change, is moved only insofar as it is in potency to the actuality towards which it is moved. And when it is moved, it is moved by another. At the same time, an agent or mover moves insofar as it is in actuality, that is, it must have the power to produce the effect in the thing being moved. To illustrate this point, Aquinas notes that it is something that is actually hot, for example fire, that moves something else, metal for example, that is only potentially hot, to be actually hot. In this example, the metal is moved and the fire is the mover. Here, the fire, that is, the mover, moves the middle, the moved, from being potentially hot to being actually hot. Or, seen from the point of view of the metal, we can say that the metal the moved is moved from being potentially hot to being actually hot by fire, the mover, which itself is actually hot. With this example, it is clear that it is not the metal, the moved, that moves itself from potentiality to actuality. Rather, it is the fire, the mover, which is actually hot, that moves the metal, the moved, from being potentially hot to being actually hot. From this, it follows that it is impossible for something to be simultaneously in potentiality and in actuality with respect to the same perfection. For example, metal cannot be simultaneously potentially hot and actually hot at the same time. Now, since something is moved only in so far as it is in potency, and something moves only in so far as it is in act, it is thus impossible for something to be both mover and moved with respect to one and the same motion. And this means that anything that is moved 
cannot be at the same time and same way the mover that moves. All this helps us understand that anything that is moved is always moved by another. Or as Aquinas puts it, omne quod movetur ab alium movetur. Everything that is moved must be moved by another. At this point, we have an initial explanation for why there is movement. Something is moved because it is moved by something else that is a mover. <laughs>